we're given the three by three matrix A with all entries equal to one and asked to determine the eigenvalues, determine what are the defects of the eigenvalues, and finally find the general solution of x prime equals a times x. To find the eigenvalues, we set up the equation, the determinant of the difference of a and lambda i equals zero and then solve for lambda. So using our matrix A, here's our initial setup, simplifying in the parentheses. We now need to evaluate the three by three determinant, set it equal to zero and solve for lambda. Using row one, the determinant is equal to the entry in row one, column one, which is one minus lambda, times the determinant of the matrix after deleting row one and column one, and then minus the entry in row one, column two, which is one, times the determinant of the matrix after deleting row one and column two, and then finally plus the entry in row one, column three, which is one, times the determinant of the matrix after deleting row one and column three. And now we evaluate the two by two determinants. Multiplying all this out and simplifying, we end up with negative lambda cubed plus three lambda squared equals zero. Factoring out negative lambda squared, we have negative lambda squared times the quantity lambda minus three equals zero. Notice the eigenvalues are zero and three, but because of the lambda squared, the eigenvalue of zero has an algebraic multiplicity of two. So we can say the eigenvalues are lambda sub one and lambda sub two equals zero, and lambda sub three equals zero, or we can say the eigenvalues are zero and three, the eigenvalue of zero has an algebraic multiplicity of two. For part B, we're asked to determine the defects of the eigenvalues. The only eigenvalue that might have a defect would be the eigenvalue of zero because it has an algebraic multiplicity of more than one, in this case two. So if we're able to determine two linearly independent eigenvectors for the eigenvalue of zero, the eigenvalue of zero won't have a defect, but for example, if we can only find one, because the algebraic multiplicity is two, and we can only find one eigenvector, two minus one is equal to one, which would mean the eigenvalue of zero has a defect of one. So now let's see if we can find two linearly independent eigenvectors for lambda equals zero. To do this, we set up the equation, the difference of a and lambda i times the vector v equals a zero vector, and then determine a vector v. So again, here's our initial setup. Because lambda is zero, Simplifying in the parentheses just results in matrix A times vector V equals a zero vector. Notice all three equations are the same, which are V1 plus V2 plus V3 equals zero. Because of this, we will be able to determine two linearly independent eigenvectors for the eigenvalue of zero. For example, for the first eigenvector V1, we can let V1 equal one, V2 equal zero, and V3 equal negative one. And for a second linearly independent eigenvector, we can let v1 equal zero, v2 equal one, and v3 equal negative one, which gives us the eigenvector v2. So because the eigenvalue of zero, which has an algebraic multiplicity of two, has two linearly independent eigenvectors, meaning it has a geometric multiplicity of two as well, the eigenvalue of zero does not have any defects. So again, we found two linearly independent eigenvectors for the eigenvalue of zero with multiplicity two, Therefore, there are no defects of the eigenvalue of zero. There's also no defects for the eigenvalue of three because it has a multiplicity of one. We also know for part C, when we go to find the general solution to x prime equals a times x, these eigenvectors give us two linearly independent solutions, which are x1 and x2, where x1 is equal to the eigenvector v1 times e to the power of zero t, and x2 is equal to the eigenvector v2 times e to the power of zero t. Of course, e to the power of zero t simplifies to one. We'll simplify this later. And now to find the general solution to x prime equals a times x, we still have to determine an eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue of three. Let's do this on the next slide. So again, for lambda sub three equals three, here's our initial setup, simplifying. We now need to solve the system shown here on the right. Let's use an augmented matrix and write it in reduced row echelon form. Notice V3 is a free variable. Row one indicates that V1 equals V3. Row two indicates V2 equals V3. And again, V3 is a free variable. So if we let V3 equal one, we have the eigenvector V3 corresponding to lambda sub three equals three of the vector one, one, one. Which means the third independent solution to X prime equals A times X is X3 equals the vector one, one, one times E to the power of three T. And now we have all the information we need to write the general solution to the system 
given by x prime equals a times x. Using the eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenvectors, we have the general solution as x of t equals c1 times the eigenvector v1 times e to the power of zero t plus c2 times the eigenvector v2 times e to the power of zero t plus c3 times the eigenvector v3 times e to the power of three t. Simplifying e to the power of zero t, we have our general solution. I hope you found this helpful.